The eternal dawn of our penances heralds its imminent end. Each was born to put an end to the other. Now both await. But while yours slumbers, mine remains vigilant. May the miracle bear witness to this oath. by which I remain here for our long-awaited meeting. Wounded by the silence of this secluded existence. And then, as the city of the Blessed Name rose up, Born on the shoulders of three mighty statues, the resounding beat of a great heart could be heard emanating from the clouds, thundering like the knell of an unseen church bell, raised higher than any other, enchanting us all to lift our gaze aloft in an ascetic call to prayer. For the miracle was about to give birth to a child.
penitent one, returned from the tomb, and walking among the mourners, your awakening is now written on the eternal pages. Anunthiada is my name, and I hail from the heavenly mountains on high, the seat and the beginning of all that is holy, so that I may address you. Look upon me thus as a preceptor in this enterprise, hailing from the highest of all seats. Penitent one, the miracle shall give birth to a new child in a great heart descended from the clouds that watches over the ancient city of the blessed name from on high. You must reach it to stop its birth. But on this ascending path of penitence, the Arch Confraternity awaits you. Those penitents that the miracle itself took as its sentinels now await your arrival. Orospina, the Confraternity of Embroiderers. Benedicta of the Confraternity of Endless Orison. Odon of the Confraternity of Salt. Lesmes of the Confraternity of Incorruptible Flesh. All under the dictate of the oldest penitent. The first among them all, who was Eviterno, father of the penitents. Penitent One, the miracle has instilled three regrets in the consciences of three of its guardians. Only by revealing them shall you achieve the humiliation of the sculpted figures that hold up the city, allowing you to ascend to its upper reaches and finally to the Great Heart. Look for the guardians.
Welcome to my most humble of workshops, which is a flurry of sawdust, glue, and varnish. Montagnes is my name, master sculptor. One of those who, with steady hand and silver chisel, patiently carve out from the wood the faithful shapes of our true saints, so that they might be contemplated and revered by the devout. No trace of light remains in my glassy eyes, yet still I know what thou seekest and needest. For are we not all penitents on this earth, in some way? The miracle proclaimed that, as my profession was that of a master sculptor, I should carve in wood the figure of the Most Blessed Lady as my last work of art. Penitent one, I beg you help me in this, my final piece of work. Seek out for me the finest chisels and tools, the most wondrous of pigments, and the most delicate of varnishes and I can sculpt for thee figures that will fit into the altarpiece you carry on your back, like this very one I offer to thee here. Please accept this as a gesture of my unending gratitude. It is but the first piece of many more I shall carve for you. Now I shall place it upon the altarpiece upon your back, and you will feel its grace, but also its burden. The hands of the miracle will guide me in the carving in accordance with the memory you bring me. May they guide thee as they guide me, penitent one. May the hands of the miracle guide thee, penitent one. This heavy curtain that separates sin and confession, crime and judgment, conceals naught but shadows. Here, in my darkness, there remaineth but tears for me, and forgiveness for those of you who seeketh it. Where are the bereaved now? Where are the repentant? How long? since the long agony of this sacrament began. Now that your penance of silence and the pain that plagues your flesh has led you to my dark confessional, let me purge the guilt you bear and thus alleviate your burden. Penitent one, Return when the guilt scorches your brow. I will free you from your burden, for that is my purpose.
Penitent one, I will free. Who are you? whose face and name you keep hidden. No, your name is of no consequence if your footsteps have led you to me. Yerma is mine own. But this is not the right moment, for the steps that my promise inspires are swift, and the will that directs them unshakable. This hatred which blinds my reason with shadows. I must leave at once.
Open up the skin and red flesh. 
Uncover the lie that my shell conceals, for I am only blood and bones. So allow the chalices to be filled with those who toast kings and priests. Now, I shall grant thee a new flask. Bring me more vials. Blessed are we, for I behold a penitent. Humbly allow us to present ourselves to your reverence. We are Medardo and Escolastico, pilgrim merchants and scribes by trade. You never know where precious assets may be. What, pray, can be unjust or malevolent in walking the roads in pursuit of a twofold profit? That of the pocket by selling, and that of the spirit by prayer. While Medardo pays penance in his meditative meanderings, I take care of the business side of things sparing not a drop of ink to write about the beautiful landscapes of the many varied paths we travel. But go ahead and cast your eyes upon our shop window. The objects that were lost on voyages have great appeal fascination, as they have become a reminder of the feat itself. Cast your eyes upon our shop window. Until our paths cross again, penitent.
Frey, how can I assist? This mallet is so wonderfully balanced in the hand that it feels quite effortless to move. Know that you have my gratitude, Penitent One. Contemplate this delicate tumbaga, the embroidered shawls, the silk dresses. You are in Rahima's shop. My goods are my home, my bed. They are as much a part of me as I am of them. You point, and this diligent arm will surely grant your request. The wood is taking shape. I sense how its veins nourish a body that seeks to be wounded with my chisels and hammers, that yearns for the cuts and indentations that will free it from its coarse origins. The centerpiece on your back now has more capacity. Here, I will wait for you until you gather more marks of martyrdom to extend your altarpiece. The altarpiece on your back now has more capacity. Here, I will wait for you until you gather more marks of martyrdom to extend your altarpiece.
May the hands of the miracle
and you may die, perhaps even rot away before my very eyes, but that will not help you. I can wait as long as it takes, long after those insatiable worms have finished their repulsive feasting. In the end, I will discover that secret thou hast been concealing from me since the first dusty cobweb appeared under the eaves of this home, and since the first wrinkle marred thine already pale and bony forehead. But for now, behave yourself. Can you not see we have a guest at our table? Sit down, sit down. Welcome to this humble table. My name is Castula, for that was what my parents so desired. It is a great rarity these days for footsteps to echo through these lonely halls. And believe me, yours have not gone unnoticed. What dost thou seek here? Dost thou crave the same fate that befell so many unfortunates who ended up possessed by the very goal they sought to make their own. Yes, this manor is awash with mysteries, secrets, and curses. If only I could find the hiding place of my brother Trifon's manuscript, perchance I might have at least one less mystery to solve. How deluded you are! Did you think you could keep it from me any longer? Do not listen to this brother of mine, dear visitor. Do not believe his untruths. If we had my brother's manuscript, we would know each and every last one of his secrets. Oh, sister! Stern, terrible Castula. Seekest not to deceive me with your detached expression. That serene indifference that becomes thee so well. I know you hear my words, even though the look you return to me arises from the depths of the shadows themselves. Welcome, visitor, to this table of reproach and intrigue. My name is Trifon, for that was what my parents so desired. Pay us no attention to my sister's words, nor her silences, but just by looking at her withered face one can sense her malicious smile. No, I am no longer interested in your confabulations. Thine understanding has long been governed by a dastardly imagination. I remember when you had that old blue-green headscarf. <laughs> it was so soft. You kept saying that it transported you back to other times, to distant memories. If you held it now in thine hands, perchance you might cease with thy constant accusations. You would never have lost it if, just for once, you had stopped rummaging through my affairs.
Blessed are we. Feast your eyes upon our shop window. We have no more items left, but you never know what may turn up on these paths. Pray come back later, penitent one. Pray, how can I assist thee, penitent one? The altarpiece on your back now has more capacity. Here, I will wait for you until you gather more marks of martyrdom to extend your altarpiece. of your guilt, so be it. The sacrament has been completed. Your guilt has been purged, but will remain my eternal burden, for that is my appointed purpose. Now go in peace. 